So here if we look at these dimensionless variables, these would be the appropriate dimensionless variables for the situation where theta is your dimensionless concentration, that's given by your unknown concentration, Ci minus C0, which is the original concentration out here, and then uh, divided by C1 minus C0. Uh, eta is showing you the dimensionless position, and the dimensionless position is equal to x divided by the square root of 4 dijt. And I've gone through how we were able to figure this out in class, um, as well as this in the book if you want to look that back up. So we can use these dimensionless variables to then change this governing uh, equation to uh, dimensionless terms. And this is what we get. <clears throat> and again, we, you can go through the math and just rearrange these equations, solve for CI, solve for X, and put them into the equations. As you can see here, theta now is only dependent on one variable, and that's eta. So therefore, this is now a uh, ordinary differential equation. We're able to do that again because eta here is dependent um, upon X and T. And so these two are clumped together into the term eta, and we're able to uh, so we're able to put these two terms together basically to uh, get theta just dependent on one uh, variable. Uh, what we also want to do now with this new governing equation is to transform the initial and boundary conditions uh, to uh, the non-dimensionalized terms. So the the bound, um, and actually now we don't have to worry about the initial condition because uh, here it's only uh, dependent upon the position. So the bound one of the boundary conditions was um, this one right here that x equals zero, ci is equal to c one. So if we want to transform that, we want to put in x equals zero, which is right here. So that would mean eta is equal to zero. So that would be that boundary condition. Um, it's at the same point, ci is equal to c1. So if we put c1 right here, it would be c1 minus c0 divided by c1 minus c0. Therefore, that boundary condition would be theta is equal to 1. So that's one of our boundary conditions. The other one is, um, since it's x approaches in infinity, um, plug it into there, eta approaches infinity. Uh, concentration ci is equal to c0 at that location. We put that in there, C0 minus C0 is 0, so theta would be equal to 0. So that's our, boundary con our new boundary conditions in governing equation in non-dimensionalized terms. From this, it's an ordinary differential equation. We can use these conditions. We can solve this um, equation here in terms of uh, theta. And what you get is that your, your non-dimensionalized concentration profile is equal to 1 minus the error function of eta. Um, so there's tabulated values for the error function. Uh, you can use MATLAB and Mathematica um, as well to figure this out. And they have built-in functions. Um, there's also graphical uh, representation of, um, of this exact equation of theta equals 1 minus the error function of eta in, in your book in figure 6.16. And this is what it looks like right here. So this one shows the y-axis has a normalized concentration of theta, and your x-axis is the eta. So what we w can use this uh, graph to do is, uh, if, for instance, if you have your uh, diffusion coefficient and your position and your time, you can calculate your eta and uh, say if it was going to be 0.75 and you move along the graph and then you could back you can figure out your normalized counts of concentration and back calculate the unknown concentration at that point because more than likely you'll know your initial concentrations um, um, in your for your system so again this is figure uh, 6.16 and this is one real quick and easy way to use your semi-infinite approximation to determine your concentration at any point uh, as it's diffusing across Finally, what makes this semi-infinite approximation really, really nice is the flux term. The equation for flux is a very simple equation for flux. Um, and, and this is flux is at the surface of uh, the interface between your polymer, whatever it is, uh, and your tissue. So it'll be at x equals 0 is equal to the square root of dij divided by pi times t 
all that multiplied times um, the concentration C1 of the drug in the polymer, for instance, in our case, it would, the example that I gave minus the uh, initial concentration in that bulk uh, tissue. Uh, so this is what makes this semi-infinite approximation really, really nice and easy. It's a real simple flux equation. Some of the other, uh, if you were not able to approximate the solution to be semi-infinite, you would have a much more difficult um, flux equation for um, some of the unsteady cases, which would need uh, a computational analysis to be able to solve it.